Hello and welcome to Travel Beans. I'm Emma, behind the camera is Alex, and today we are hiking in the Bulgarian mountains. Good morning guys, just a quick recap for anyone new. Alex and I are currently in Bansko, which is a mountainside resort town in the southwest of Bulgaria. Today is going to be our last day of hiking here in the mountains and it's going to be a big one. We are expecting it to take the whole day, mainly because we are horribly unfit. But also we are really hoping that we're going to have some great scenery and I think there's a few lakes that we're supposed to pass as well on the journey. Instead of getting the gondola, we decided to get the bus this morning. There's three of them that leave from Bansko town per day. So we got the first one that left at 8.30 in the morning. Last time we got the gondola up the mountain and we walked from the top stop of the gondola up to Viren Hut, which is where the bus has dropped us off today. So we will be starting off today where we ended our last hike. If you do come to this area, you're most likely to come here because this is where most of the walks are starting from. Here you can top up your water, top up your supplies, grab some food, even get a night's accommodation, but most importantly for us right now, get yourself a coffee. Already. We've been walking what like a few minutes max. Oh. I mean look you can see there's the hut just there that we did the opening shot in. Amazing! We made it! Lake number one! That was a lot of rocks. I'm guessing it must be from an avalanche or something. You have to be super careful when you're climbing on them. Once you get above the rocks, it all opens up. And then as you come around the corner, you're met by the first lake. Look how nice and tranquil this is. There isn't anyone here. So this is the perfect place for us to have breakfast. We are staying at this nice little lodge down in the town and the hosts were kind enough to make us a little packed breakfast, which is what oh, we're going to have now. <laughs> I actually have no idea what's in here. I'm not sure if it's going to be a Bulgarian breakfast or just some random crab. <laughs> <laughs> I've got myself some cheese. That's a good start. It's a little bit sweaty cheese now. Some little slithers of meat, some like ham or something in there. Nice. Some very wet butter. <laughs> <laughs> a bit melty. The same, but with cheese. <laughs> and finally, what I would guess would be some bread. Yep, a couple of different types of bread. Nice. So we're going to fuel up on our carbs and our cheese before we have to move on to the next lake. <laughs> Why is that stuff down, down your cleavage? <laughs> <laughs> I've just seen that. <laughs> well, as a larger breasted woman, I get issues sometimes with my sports bra <laughs> pushing my boobs together. That's a de-sweat. And it causes a lot of sweat, so I'm kind of using this as a separation tool. <laughs> <laughs> You're admitting this on camera. Oh my god. Don't you dare include this in the video. That little thing. Yeah. Look at it. 
I thought it was a little bee, but I look closely. I'm sure it's a hummingbird. I can see it still. That. Oh. Look at it there down there. That's got to be a hummingbird. Oh, look at oh, it. Oh. I can't see. You keep saying look, but. Look there, there, this little. Um, oh it's... my goodness. It is. Oh. oh my goodness. I thought it was just an oversized wasp. That has to be one of the most surprising wildlife spots we've come across. An actual hummingbird. Regulars of the channel, you know I love my birds. And I don't know how a hummingbird was not in my top three. In case you need reminding, it's a puffin, a kingfisher, <laughs> and a peregrine falcon. But now, okay, what can I bump off the list? What's the worst one of those? Puffin, kingfisher, Maybe peregrine falcon. Maybe it has to be top four. The top four now, I've got the top four <laughs> birds. Hummingbirds are in it. I'm just scared it off by screaming. I feel like I can't be sure. I need a, a closer look. I don't know what that is, but I, it looks like really up close when you look at the shape of the wings, like some kind of moth Aww. with a really long... My yeah. excitement's gone now, but I managed to get, I think, enough video that I can zoom in and have a look at it when we get home. Oh, what is it? It's a mystery animal. I was mystery on cloud creature. nine and now it could just be a rubbish moth, but it, oh, what are you but look about? at it, it's, awesome. it's, it's buzzing into it. Whatever it is, it's really cool, I whether it's care. a moth or a bird. It's got the long bit, like a beak, going in, but it's got these little antennas that are tricking me, so it's making me think like it's a moth. But it's moving its wings up a million miles a minute, so now I get back to being a hummingbird. <laughs> You've got me stumped, mate. Stumped. It has to be a moth. Like, when you actually look at it, yes, it looks kind of hummingbird-like, especially the way it's flying. But when you look up close, the end of its beak, when it pulls out, kind of curls in a little bit. And it's got the antenna, and the, the wings have that kind of moth shape to them. So, I'm going to vote moth, but I reckon it's called something like a hummingbird moth, just because it is so familiar to a hummingbird. I'm heartbroken now after seeing uh, that up close, and it's, it's got the curly little beak. It's not a beak. Beaks don't curl. No, beaks don't curl, do they? Oh. I'm beyond unfit. Oh, I need about a month of this. Oh, this whole video is just going to be me walking out of breath. <laughs> oh. oh, let's go. One really amazing thing about this town is that you can get fresh mountain water everywhere. All dotted around the town you have these like just public fountains that are constantly running with fresh water and also up here in the mountains as well so you only have to buy one bottle and you can just keep refilling it. So many of you watching who have been around for a while will know that we had a bit of a struggle a year or so back with mental health where I was hit with depression pretty hard and we had to go home and um, get that fixed. But now, luckily, I'm on the other side of it. I'm off my antidepressants. And actually one thing that I find, well, we find that whenever we're feeling a bit low or a bit down or a bit cooped up, all we have to do is go outside, be around nature, and it's almost like a reset button in your brain. I feel that they should have like mental health retreats just in the mountains where you just hike every day, surrounded by nature. It makes you feel so small and insignificant, but in the best possible way. We stayed in Istanbul recently for about six or seven weeks, and we absolutely loved that city. As far as cities go, it was in our top five, definitely. However, um, we always kind of struggle to settle in cities for a really long time because we do have this constant craving for nature. I don't know if it's because both Alex and I grew up in the countryside, so we're kind of used to having nature around us, but when we go such a long time without it, we're just craving it constantly. So the first thing we thought of 
where should we go next after Istanbul? We just looked at our map at the nearest place that had a bunch of green, took us here. And that's where we are right now. Yeah. Look at all this green. Ugh, glorious nature. Next time on Travel Beans. Oh, ow, what just happened? Boo boo alert. <laughs> <laughs> you full on stacked it there. Oh, no blood here though. Well, nice. I'm glad you didn't like hurt yourself so much that you couldn't walk. Because I definitely could not carry you back.